Hello and welcome to art class. So today we're going to finish up our creature creations by giving them a habitat. And I'm going to go over some of the texturing techniques and also shading. I'll be using crayons. Also colored pencils would work for this. Uh, I'm going to just sketch in an outline of my animal with a pencil first, and then I'll be using a fork to create the texture. So for this creature, I am not going to shade it in with pencil because I'll be using crayon for that. Uh, and also I wanted to make a different creature. So this is, um, this is different than what we did during class when we were remote. This is a fringe-tailed weaselet. It lives in the desert and it has long silky hair. So I'm going to use the tine of the fork to press an indentation in the paper so that when I shade over it with crayons, those lines will show up as white. This is great for whiskers, for uh, long silky hair like this, but you could also use it for any textured fur, even, even curly fur. Um, when we were doing remote, you'll remember that we use this technique to create scales and feathers. So I'll be using three colors of crayon. I want the overall color to be purple, but I'm going to lay down a, a pink base underneath. And then I'll be using blue for the deeper shadows. You'll notice as you rub a crayon over those indentations that the lines show up white. The paper is pushed down below the reach of the crayon and the crayon just skips right over it. Now I'm going back in with the purple, which is going to be the main color of my creature. It's going to be a purple creature, but I'm just going to make some areas darker than others and then blend the colors together. You can give something a rounded look, a more realistic form, if you shade around the edges a little bit more darkly, it will look like it has three dimensions rather than just being flat. So I'm going to use this blue crown on the underneath edges that would be in shadow, like under its belly. And I'm also going to darken up some areas like um, the bottoms of its legs and a little bit on the fringe that's hanging down. The more dark areas you put in, the better the indentation lines show up. And then I'm using black to outline the eyes and to darken the pupils and to just highlight different features like the fangs and the snout and the little sprinkles of hair on the top of its head. So I finished drawing my creature, but I want to give him a habitat. He needs a place to live. So start by drawing a horizon line. That's the line where the ground meets the sky. You can draw right up to your creature, then skip over your creature and finish the line on the other side. That will make it look like your creature is in front of the background. Now I'm going to make maybe some distant hills in the background. And I'll do the same thing again when I come to my creature. I'll just skip over and then continue drawing on the other side. So it looks like the landscape is behind him. Since my creature lives in the desert, I'm going to give him some rocks. And also, I want to suggest that he burrows under the rocks. So I'm shaping one of the rocks that it's going to be his, his little burrow or cave where he digs. I'll give another couple of random rocks here and there. But mostly I'm going to just leave it plain, uh, sandy soil, and not put in too many details. Maybe 
a cactus. Since he lives in the desert, we'll give him a cactus. Now I'm going to use the fork again to make the needles on the cactus. So I'm pushing into the paper in little short strokes all over the cactus to make it look like it's covered with needles. And you can tell I'm pushing into the paper because I'm making the camera kind of jiggle around a bit. Um, you might want to have something underneath your paper when you do this. It will actually dent better if it's laying on top of a magazine or old newspapers, if you're not working in your sketchbook, uh, if you just have a single piece of paper, you probably want something underneath it so that you're not denting the table beneath your work. Now I'll color the cactus green and the darker the color, the better the white lines show up. So I'll start with a light green and then go back with a dark green to layer over it. Crayon layers up so nicely. I really like to use more than one color. I think it makes it look more interesting. Now you can really start to see the needles of the cactus popping through. Changing colors and onto the rocks, I'm going to save my darkest lines for the bottom edge of the rock. I'm pressing harder on the bottom edge so that it looks like a shadow. It makes the rocks look more round. My animal burrows in the ground, so I'm going to use black and create a really dark shadow under this rock over here to show a hole in the ground where he's, he's dug himself a nest. He hides in his burrow during the day and he comes out at night to hunt insects. You could color your habitat all one color, like all green for grass or all yellow for sand like I have here, but it's more interesting if you blend in some different shades. I created my sand with two or three different shades of yellow and orange and cream. And then I also used that gray color on the distant hills. That's a trick that artists use. Sometimes they draw something that's supposed to be far away in a light, cool color like gray or blue or lavender because those colors will look more distant. And then I'm making his burrow, the hole in the ground, really dark with black and adding some more shadows underneath the bottom edges of the rocks. One handy trick if you need a sharp edge on your crayon is to break it in half and then peel the paper back. This will give you a nice edge. <laughs> 